Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Hagbard Selene here again on another lovely Friday evening. And today I have Pacific Ocean Liner. Yes, it's another beautiful episode of the sinking of the Pacific Ocean Liner. Let us begin here. Oh, yes, Pacific. Pacific, you've started off in just a beautiful fashion, looking just as fucking crazy as indeed you are. Hello? Yeah, this is me, Pacific. How are you? Hi, everyone. It's me, Hagbard. And we all know he's so crazy that he actually might think he's talking into a banana. Oh, yeah, that's a good subject. Okay, I'll talk about it. Thanks. All right, bye. It's going bananas. It's me, Pacific. Oh, that was his attempt at humor. Terrifying. Pacific, everybody. This isn't going to be hours long, but... Shutting from the sky. No, just an hour or so. They sent me an article that uh, I will include in the link here about an internet troll who weighed 700 pounds. It wasn't just an article. They did a whole special on it. Now, the fact that they did a special on it, do you think that's because that represents the average person who, quote-unquote, is a troll, whatever the news defines as that, considering the news is composed predominantly of technologically backwards people who wouldn't be able to properly define what an actual troll was? As a matter of fact, they arrested a troll. He was a Jewish kid that was pretending to be a Zionist, an ISIS member, a neo-Nazi, sending hate mail and messages. See, now if you define a troll as that, that's one thing. If you define a troll as just anyone who disagrees with or makes fun of someone on the internet, then... You're talking about a wide variety of people, up to and including some journalist. Then said that his life had spiraled where he wouldn't even leave the house, so he got online for the specific purpose of being mean. We don't want to focus on trolls. I think we've done that enough. And yet here you are about to ramble for an hour about it. I think that we all know, deep down in our heart, that enough studies have been done on their Machiavellian side they're, they've been bullied, they've been depressed. There's an old saying that misery loves company. And that... The Machiavellian side? What, what studies are you referring to exactly, Pacific? Do they have studies on internet trolls that I'm unaware of? Do people have, like, self-described trolls need to go into counseling and be like, okay, I need to see what exactly is going on with this troll while they're taking field notes? That is why people do it. I've seen pretty women harassed. I've seen... Unthinkable! How could you harass pretty women? I mean, they deserve nothing but the greatest respect and admiration, right? No matter what they say or do. You're part of the problem, Pacific. People that are not ill-mannered and ill-tempered and people that wouldn't hurt a fly or a flea get dogged and harassed. As you all know, it has happened to me. Yeah, you don't fall into any of the previously stated categories, Pacific. You're, oh, you're a loudmouth, pompous prick. That's why I take the piss out of you, because it's fun. A woman at work last week who was riding my bus as a bus aide told me that another driver had told her, you ought to get a facelift, you ought to do this, you ought to change hair color. The woman started criticizing, this woman is in her 60s. Why the fuck are you gossiping with middle-aged women? Do you, do you have nothing better to do with your time? Do you have no interests besides the problems of 60-year-old women? I mean, why are you engaging in this, man? You shouldn't, you shouldn't be supporting gossips. It's, it's unbecoming. And she told me how frustrating it was that somebody would have the audacity and feel comfortable enough to start criticizing her looks though they don't have any kind of a relationship that would be deep enough for somebody to even offer that kind of stuff. Yeah, that happens all the time. People tell you, hey, you know, you'd look better in this color, or hey, you should stand straighter, or hey, you should shave that beard off, or hey, you should cut your hair. Or... People say that to all kinds of people, man. It's, it's just what people do. They, they think that they're being nice, and that's completely fine. You should accept it as such and move on with your life. Like, I'm an atheist, but if someone says I'll pray for you, it stopped bothering me a long time ago unless it was in a malicious, backhanded way. As I told you, a woman last year when I was growing my hair like Shaggy Doo said my hair looked like the SHIT. And what I should have done is I should have shut that down, wrote up a complaint, got in her butt and sling. Well, I mean, that's one, that's one way to do it. Or you can just handle it like a man and ignore her. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure you growing your hair would be awful. You'd look like a giant Weimariner or a poodle. You've got that, 
You've got that wiry, thick redhead hair that just doesn't do well long, man. There's a certain type of redhead hair that's very thin and fine, and and it does well long. And then there's that that long hair you you would do that. Oh, oh, it just wouldn't go well, man. It's just a fact. If any man were to walk up to any woman in any American workplace and say, you know what? When are you going to change your hair? Looks like SHAT, I guarantee you, human resources would be involved, and that guy would either get a suspension or a termination notice. Yeah, and if you had done it, it's possible the same thing would have happened. But you see how you didn't and they did? That's the problem. You shouldn't and they shouldn't. You should both just go, well, that person's either a judgmental asshole or a well-meaning idiot. And either way, their opinion doesn't bother me. We've often talked about women push the envelope at work a lot and get away with it. Fact. And I hate, I hate to be this guy, but I've seen men sit around and talk shit about sexualizing their coworkers. Everyone has to deal with it, man. Get used to it. But this woman went on to tell me about rude comments people have made to her. Some people, we have floaters. Some people don't bid on a route. They'll bid to float, meaning that dispatch has the authority to send them on any bus they want. And that can change every day. One bus. Sounds so exciting. In the morning, a different bus in the afternoon, different bus the next day. She went out to a bus, say good morning. The driver says, what are you doing on here? Where's my para? Your para's not here and they sent me. And she turned around this lady and said, do you have a problem? Why are you being so rude to me? And all of a sudden, the woman stopped. Oh, well, while you're eating on camera, let me just comment that that person just could have been having a bad day. That's, that might have been why they stopped, is that that moment of self-reflection they were, when they were told they were being rude was all it took. That's, that's how society handles things, and you don't need to make a judgment call about someone's entire personality based on one moment of frustration early in the morning as a bus driver. I mean, really. What does this have to do with 700 pound trolls? Absolutely fucking lootly nothing, but you are the king of sidetracking yourself and eating and drinking on camera. I don't know why. When I spent time in a chat room years ago in Spokane, I had reached a low. I had reached a low, couldn't find work, discovered the chat rooms, Yahoo. And it shocked me how rude so many people were in there. There were nice people. I met nice people. There were a lot of women that, I'll be honest. They weren't women, first and foremost. And secondarily, guys, just remember, when you were in chat rooms in the late 90s or early 2000s, it's distinctly possible that this fuckwit was in there with you. To be honest with you, they were heavier. But they were just in there to talk. They weren't trying to come on and get nude on cam. They weren't trying to do anything. There was just a lot of hurting people in there that found that I'm ugly, I'm not attractive, I'm not going to get anywhere out there, so here I am. Oh, so you held a mirror up and decided that, huh? I'm in a chat room. I'll be right back. My cold. Oh, what the fuck, Pacific? You could have at least turned the camera off, man. Just gonna sit here and listen to you blow your fucking nose, really? Really, just stare at your sad little fucking pantry while you blow your nose? Is, is there office equipment in there? You have like office equipment in your pantry, dude? Is this also your office? I bet there's a whole desk in here and everything, isn't there? There is. There's got to be. There's a whole fucking desk in there. You My channel has office. taught me that I have become jaded and hard sometimes. As I well, God forbid you actually be capable of going through emotional turmoil without an emotional reaction. That would be terrible. I said about leather-bound books, I had shot a comment at her one day because I didn't know the context of it. I just knee-jerked and went, <laughs> and vomited. Which you do all the time, but you're also making judgment calls against people that do that online. That's, that's one of your major complaints. I don't remember if it's this video or one of the other shitholes I fucking previewed to do this, but... Yeah, yeah, you do that all the time. And as I've gotten to know her by her comments, she's an extremely intelligent individual and happens to be an atheist. And as Pacifica said, that I've had to come back to something. That too often in any of us, there's a tendency that when we're with a specific group of beliefs, tenets of faith, whatever, that because American society is very good at doing this, 
I say a lot of things on my channel about people who drive Subarus and people who buy Land's End and L.L. Bean stuff and people who have their doggies and people who do the, the Starbucks. And anyone else you feel like labeling with arbitrary fucking actions to judge as a group. It's just what you do, and I understand the urge to do so, but I don't say Christians be like. I, I say Christians tend to believe, or Muslims tend to believe, or feminists tend to believe. But I, I try to stay away from just saying anyone that drives a Subaru is a hippie. And it's just weird, man. Those are what I call genres of culture. Gen genres of culture, huh? Okay, sure. Genres of culture is the Starbucks crowd. They, they tend not to be conservative or God-fearing. It's just my observation. Generalizations can be made. <laughs> that I can say atheists believe this, thus, and so, and yet I've had... No, you can't, because we believe against... I don't believe. You see, it's a negative. I have to admit that sometimes there are atheists that they're just their daily actions and behavior puts a lot of us Christians to shame. I would bet that my personal case is true there. I do this online because it's fun and funny. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. In real life, I'm a very nice guy. Now, I could argue. I could say, well, they don't have the spiritual attack we do. What? Oh god, this is gonna get interesting, isn't it? Yeah, this is not a slam to any of my atheist friends, but they don't have- How- how could it be a slam? You're about to go into this weird, metaphysical, spiritual rant about how Satan attacks Christians. Go on, though. Of the satanic attack, they don't have that spiritual dynamic coming against them. Because the devil is gonna leave people alone that are not into God. Those are- yeah, this is that believer's persecution thing I always love to see. You think the devil is doing things. It's a disorder, Pacific. They're called intrusive thoughts. If you have intrusive thoughts, it means you're psychiatrically damaged. It means you need fucking medication, dude. Us that are into God, he will harass us and tempt us and on and on it goes. Do you believe in gang stalking too? Please say you do. I really hope you believe in government gang stalking, especially if the, they're they're like an occult group and, and Satanists and stuff. I really hope that. Are, are you like the Black David Ike? But I've had to learn the hard way that so many times we don't love. And if we look at a lot of viewpoints or cultural cliques, if you don't earn a certain amount of money, you're not invited in. If you don't dress a certain way, you're not invited in. This is true, both up and down the ladder. Lower e economic status people do not like having very wealthy people as part of their social groups as it makes them socially awkward. For similar reasons. I'm not justifying this behavior, I'm simply explaining to you that someone of a distinctly different socioeconomic class as you being as part of a group that otherwise would not characterize oneself as the lower socioeconomic stat. I mean, why do you think there are box seatings? There's, there's box seating at games, man. There's a reason for that. What Pacific calls the golf club mentality. You go or the trailer park mentality. Or the ghetto mentality. They're all crab pots, man. It's just some crab pots are wealthier than others. Go to the golf club. You need to be invited in by a member, and you better dress a certain way. I'm sure the Crips aren't like that at all. You're not going to come in in jeans and a t-shirt. Not acceptable. I stay away from those places. Too much stuffiness going on. It's bull crap -aroo. Yeah, they have all these social codes and shit. You just, you just can't, you can't abide by those. Even if I was a multimillionaire, I would not belong to a club. Luckily, we'll never have to find out what that would be like. Pacific would start his own in Pacific fashion. You already kind of had, and it's kind of a sad little club. When I'm talking to the girl that I'm interested in, her father was in the military, and because of that, they moved around a lot, and they lived on a military basis, and she met a lot of Filipinas. <laughs>
<laughs> they lived on a lot of. So I mean, did she, she? Was her father based in the Philippines, or are there just a lot of a Filipinos on military bases? That seems weird. And this is what she said to me. I noticed exactly what you said. They like to be silly, giggle, and they're almost like they're in junior high. They want to listen to music and all that. And I, it took me a long time to see that, but I finally see they, they're content with giggling. They're content with social media. They're content Who's they? Content with their music. And she went on to say, but I also noticed they're very mean to their white men. Demanding a Who's they? The Filipinos? Are you saying Filipinos are mean to me white men? What? Honey. And she said, I noticed just growing up in this environment that I'd see flat nosed, brown skin, women that weren't so pretty and they were horrible to their white husbands. And I found, she said, I found that those white men. Did, she, did he just say flat nosed, brown skinned women that weren't so nice to their white men? Why you gotta bring it up that, that hard, dude? Like, I'm part of a shit slinging group that makes fun of people that are racially uncomfortable, but you make me racially uncomfortable, man. The way you talk about it is just way too focused. It's almost as bad as, if not worse, than people that believe in, like, intersectional or intersectionality or intersectional feminism. You're worse. They're at least trying to do good. You're, like, casually racist. And would take more abuse from those Filipino women than they would a white woman. Of course. Have you seen a naked Filipino? Right here. Well, yeah, of course. You don't get laid by anyone. I won't take it from anybody now. What does this have to do with what I'm talking about? Who the fuck knows? We learn by experience. But what I have found that stands tall, head and shoulders above everything else, is misery loves company. It doesn't matter if you're an atheist. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian. It doesn't matter if you're slender or overweight. If you're an unhappy person, you're going to get on here and go all over the place. You just admitted no more than like 10 minutes ago to doing that yourself. You do know that, right? You just said that you have a tendency to do that. Does that mean you're an unhappy person? You appear to be a wildly unhappy person. Whereas if you see the chats and stuff I'm involved with, I'm laughing and joking and fucking around with people because I'm a genuinely kind of pleasant guy. I don't give a fuck. Um, but you, you seem genuinely uptight, tense, constantly conspiratorial, constantly paranoid. You seem like the unhappy one, sir. Many people take my rants to say you're a very angry person. Whoops. I'm not. I, you just appear to be. You just play one on TV, is that what you're saying? I, I do tend to knee-jerk. I tend to be sensitive and I tend to react. As I was explaining to my girlfriend, I said, you gotta understand, I never had security all my life. Never. Oh, we're gonna make it into a fucking pity party about Pacific again, okay. I never had a warm, loving mother that Talk to me and his little boy at night. That is not fucking shocking. You clearly have mommy issues, bro. Pacific has had to raise himself. Yes, I had a home with material things. We were what I consider upper middle class. We lived in Mammoth. We had a, a ski house. I mean, we had it good. What happened then, man? I mean, you should have been able to get something out of that. They would dispute that, say that it was tough for them. Well, I'm sure compared to what you were doing as a child, it was tough because they had to support that lifestyle. So it probably wasn't easy. That may be, but we were not poor. We had a truck, two cars, a camper. I'd say that's pretty... Because your parents worked their asses off for it. Pretty dang good. Plus, we lived in the Sierra Nevadas, California's premier ski resort. <sighs> but yet, I didn't respect the basics. Oh, God. So that's why you ended up sitting in a closet ranting to people for hours on end? Because mommy didn't hug you enough? Because daddy didn't pick you up? And stop watching off fucking camera blow your nose, you nutball. That's the love I needed. And I find that even now this, this woman is extremely gorgeous. And she's telling me that guys would make fun of her because she wasn't big-breasted. This and that, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And there's still that part of me that says, why would she come after me? Why would she have an interest in me? Well, because she sees that you're deeply damaged, vulnerable, and probably going to be easy to be with. You see, you're like a training, you're like a guy with training wheels on. Like, frankly, I imagine if, if I were any woman in the world, you'd be the easiest person in the world to take advantage of, dude. I hear, I hear women have done that a lot. You should probably look out for that. 
We all tend to go off our default. We all tend to go off of what we're conditioned to respond. And I explained to her, Pavlov, I said, you know Pavlov, the dog, right? Pavlov was not a dog. Pavlov was a scientist. He had a dog. He experimented on many dogs by incising into their cheeks and measuring salvation. What? Are you a dog? Are you inferring that people can be trained exactly as Pavlov described? Because... Because while we can in a subconscious way, we unfortunately have a conscious mind that can find out what people are doing, otherwise society would already have been conditioned in the manner in which you're about to imply. So either you have the same cognitive abilities as a dog, like Josh, the uh, Canadian atheist, seemed to imply about all black people in America, or you fucked this up entirely. Pavlov. The experiment and the Russian scientist and the dog ring the bell, dog salivates, give him a treat. Uh, no, you ring a bell while simultaneously feeding the dog or giving the dog a treat and it would salivate because it knew food was going to enter its mouth. Eventually, when you took away the secondary stimulus of the food, the bell would actually just cause the dog to salivate in anticipation. But don't hurt yourself. It's true with us. We go through bad circumstances. And we finally learn from those bad circumstances, okay, Pacific's got it. Good-looking white women are not interested in Pacific. Good-looking white women have looked down their nose at me, snubbed me, been rude to me, don't talk to me. The only time... Well, how about just just decent-looking women? Why, why do you always chase the highest ones that expect their attention? I mean, I honestly would just like to direct every rad femme that ever comes and talks to me to your page. And just be like, if you want to deal with it, deal with him. Stop bothering normal guys. Stop bothering normal people that view women as equals and then you want to take their agency. But instead, shoot at him. Go deal with him. I mean shoot verbally at him. I don't mean I don't mean shoot Pacific. Come on, guys. It's not, obviously not what I meant. I just mean focus your attentions on people like this. Find people like this instead of just saying men are like this. When they talk to me is when they're forced to, be it in my bus setting or be it on a professional basis, and even then... Can you blame them, man? I mean, really? If, if I was forced to interact with you, I would avoid you like the plague. I do this to satisfy a niche audience and to <clears throat> jerk off. Dude, it's too much fun fucking with you. It's child-directed speech, and it's completely insincere as hell. And people get mad at me for making generalizations, and I say that I wish that my video of feminization is destroying Western women, Western women are destroying themselves, I wish those videos would be shouted from a bullhorn from every single corner of America and force every one of these kind of women I'm talking about to hear this, whether they agree with it or not. That. Well, it's good to know that you would be for forced indoctrination. Something about your personality has always spoke to that. That's kind of what I'm, I'm here against because they're force indoctrinating young boys into the similar ideals. But go on. Somebody needs to hold the mirror of truth up to these women. I've been trying to do that to you for like three or four episodes now, man. You just don't seem to be getting it. The girl I'm interested in said to me the other day, I love it when you nail flaky white women. My mother and I agree 100%. Your assessment is dead on. She said that in the town she lives in, she was more accepted by the black girls than she ever was the whites. The whites didn't accept her. They didn't invite her to sit at the lunch table in the cafeteria at school. What does that have to do with white women and the way they treat men or whatever the fuck you've been on about? You just made this about a racial divide. It had nothing to do with it before. I've noticed even here in Denver that the Hispanics and the blacks tend to group together. And you very, very rarely see the whites sitting with the blacks. It's crazy. I agree. It, it is really hard to break into that black table. I mean, I tried. I grew up trying it. It ain't easy, homie. And I just can't compute this. But I asked myself, if I hadn't been through what I'd been through, would I be more, would I have been international? She raises a good point. You say Hong Kong was a waste, but if you hadn't gone to Hong Kong, you wouldn't have made the channel. And I wouldn't have found you. Good point. 
The world would have been a better place for both of you, more than likely, and, and I imagine Hong Kong wouldn't have been any sourer. Am I more open to blacks and races because of what I've been through? Absolutely. Wow, that's a, that's a way to say that. I mean, I can't imagine what you imagined before you went through whatever it is you went through, vaguely. Anybody remember the book, Jungle Book, Mowgli, Raised by Wolves? <laughs> Are you equating being okay with other races with being raised with wolves? Oh, God, dude. Oh, Jesus. I think that, uh, that's a good story. I'm learning as I get older. Oh, Pacific, you know nothing about audio pickup. Today's young people are playing victim bad. Luckily, you'd never do that. Really bad. And I've talked about my life with my the parents that adopted me. I did not get what I needed at all. Most of today's modern parenting in America is keeping the kids alive. That's it. Minivan mom. You do realize that that was, that was more than most parenting has been through history, right? You do realize that only in America or in the Western world in the last two or three hundred years has it been the norm for children to survive. I mean, that's pretty novel, man. The fact that the fact that our species, ill-equipped as it is to live in civilian life like we do, uh, the fact that we live in such a civilization that allows even the worst of parents, even the most retarded of parents, to keep their children alive, I'd say we're doing pretty good. There are plenty of places where parents can't even say that. I'm running them here, there, everywhere, giving them their TVs and cell phones and all their personal eye accoutrements, and at the end of the day, there's no real love, and I see evidence of that in the way so... No, no, you see evidence in that in very small percentages of the population. Most of the population still obsesses about their kids. I mean, I've got, I've got several siblings, cousins with, with kids, and they're good parents. They don't just put them in front of a TV and piss off. So many of these young women grow up, and I see them on my bus, and I see them in society, and before somebody jumps on me and says, you're talking negative about your students. No, I'm not. That our society has been so conditioned as the Pavlov dog experiment to behave a certain way that I can take a group of students and for two months they will not say thank you, hello, goodbye. But I keep being consistent, keep being consistent. And now 90% of my high schoolers, including one who had a mean face, says, you too, have a good day. She spoke to me? you got to be kidding. <laughs> Well, congratulations. You've learned something very important. That one thing that not just children, but especially children, crave is consistency. Why is it so hard to break down the defenses of our American culture? Why is it so Why are you so obsessed with talking to high schoolers? So hard for women to believe, oh my gosh, he's actually a nice guy. He's not a creep. Look well, you don't make it easy, Otto, to be fair. Look at what we're up against. Look at what consumerism has done. Look at what materialism has done. Look at what they're showing on TV. Men are bad, men are bad, men are bad, men are bad, men are bad all the time. I mean, it's bad. And so well, you're getting to sound like the worst of the worst of the MRAs. It's not always like that. It's one of the many tropes our society works with. Unfortunately, radical feminism has made it so that it's socially acceptable to say that men are bad, but... Trust me, man, there are still plenty of representations of good, solid, dependable men on TV. And all core forms of stuff, advertising, all, all that fun shit. There, don't, don't let it degrade into that. When a man like me stands up and says this, this, that, and the other about women, they tend to go, eh, you gotta be kidding. Here's another male uh, misogynist, chauvinist, blah, 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 blah. Well, unfortunately, you actually are all of these things. You just want a woman to be sexually and emotionally available to you whenever it's convenient for you and to otherwise leave you alone because otherwise they're harassing you. That's not the case at all. The problem is... The problem is these ridiculously long pauses. Is what we're lacking all the way around is love.
That's why we have a proliferation of trolls. They're not loved. They don't feel loved. They're not well balanced. Something is wrong. That's a no-brainer. And more often than not, whether it was in a chat room, or whether it's on YouTube, or any host of blog sites, they always choose avatars that are not them. The fake pictures. The picture of the car. The picture of a searchlight, or a starfish, or a... Or an Asian woman, Pacific? Your picture isn't you. My picture isn't me because I don't want to deal with the repercussions. You're the one who's crazy enough to come online and just be like, Hey, I've called myself Pacific publicly and apparently in my everyday life as far as I can tell in my other videos. I can't imagine what the people who are actually around you think. Oh wait, you describe it all the time, they think you're weird. Baby-faced, fishy. And every time I saw the baby-faced, fishy, I thought, overweight female. <laughs> That's nice. I confess that I was in a chat room having a lively discussion with a woman from Maine. I went into the Maine chat room. We were talking, 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 and she goes, do you want to see my cam? I said, sure. She turns on her cam, and she must have been five or six hundred pounds. Well, yeah, that's about the tail you deserve. Big head, big body, and I confess I was, I was horrified. This is what I did. We talked for a few minutes because I didn't want to freak out. And I said, I'll be back. I canceled out the cam, canceled out the chat, blocked her, turned off my computer. I went, <sighs> Well, that was nice. I mean, for someone that constantly complains about how painful and damaging rejection is, I'm, I'm sure that didn't hurt. I would never say, oh my gosh, you're gross. Pacific doesn't do that to people. Pacific talks on his forum and people get the impression, does this guy walk around belching out his views to every woman out there? I don't. God, no, dude, you'd be in jail by now. Don't say that at all. I still try to give people the benefit of the doubt, but I'm right on white women. I am right 100% when it comes to the women in this culture. They're not nice. They're not you're dead wrong, dude. You've just, you've met some shitty people and you blame the entire sex for it. Well, the sex and the race, you think all women that aren't white are super awesome, I guess, or something. I can't figure you, your weird worldview out. Nice at all. So I will always look at the ethnic. Always. Yikes. Some people might call that a fetish. Pacific is not conventional, and I'll be attacked for that. It may Actually, a white guy having an Asian woman fetish, or even just an ethnic fetish, is, well, it's, it's pretty standard, man. It's pretty conventional. Getting the admissions that I've admitted, scandalous ones. And people have a heyday with that. And I don't care. I don't care. The fact is, when you put yourself out here, you're going to be a target. Again, we watch his brain reset. 700-pound man... One of the people he was attacking was a coach. Says, let, let me see your picture. He finally showed him. He says, I can help you. Exercise, do this. And he listened to him. And he lost weight. You'll see the pictures in there. We, we tend to think that the trolls that are attacking us are these slender, Robert Redford style people. Well, unfortunately for you, I actually am. They're not. They're the chubby kid that was in the back of the class that nobody talked to and would go. That's who it is. Well, you're close. I was the chubby kid in the back of the classroom that made fun of everyone and everything, but... I actually had a lot of friends because when I did it, I did it in a comedic enough way to flip people over to my side and gain quite a following. Now you see, that's how you do it, sir. That's called comedy. That's that's how you that's how you do that. Now being chubby in high school and being made fun of it, what that made me do in my my late teens and early twenties is considerably start watching my weight. So now mm, I'm six foot three, 180 pounds, and fairly well built. 
So I appreciate you trying to say that we're all 800 pound weirdos, but that's just not possible, man. You must know that statistically that just cannot be possible. I'm just a bored guy. I think it's funny. And I said this the other day, more men than women troll. I don't see women trolling. I do. I know a lot of female trolls. Actually, they're the best because when they reveal their women, they really tend to be able to cut into men's pride, and they know that. Nothing like the men. The men, the men have a big problem with it. Most of the men that do this are people that don't have a girlfriend, don't have a job, are obese and overweight, are despised and rejected by mainstream society. People say you're despised and rejected. Jeez, look at that realization come over him. <sighs> yeah, I know. It's hard to realize that you're just forcibly trying to eject everything negative onto the other person without realizing that you fit most of these descriptors. The only one you don't is that you're not fat. I mean, congratulations. That's, that's so hard not to do. I mean, when I was in high school, I was fat because I didn't give a fuck. If you give any fucks whatsoever about your fucking personal weight, you'll be fine. Yes and no. Mm, yes and yes. You're, you're highly rejected by society. You clearly are. I mean, you sit in closets. You don't have a girlfriend currently. You didn't before. You constantly used to whinge about it. You're most of these things, man. A lot of people that know me like me. I'm the one that chooses not to have close bonds with a lot No, I assure you, you're not. If, if you were, then you'd get invites to places that you'd have to regularly reject, which, which I just don't think you get. ...people because it's not worth it. And it's time to get up, and I'm already up. But misery does love company. Whether it's... You know, that saying you're getting totally wrong. Misery doesn't like company necessarily because they want other miserable people. I know very few miserable people that actually want to hang out with other miserable people. That saying has been so misconstrued over time it disgusts me. They really are saying misery wants someone around so that they can absolve them of their misery. Someone wants to be comforted. On this internet forum, or whether it's in a workplace, women commenting you're too old to dye your hair black. Um, my hair was always black. I'm Latina. I dye my hair. What is that to you? That people would come up... You just said there weren't women trolls. What are you doing? Couple weeks ago, a woman that I don't talk to very much says, Why are you wearing that wig? And this is an example of Pavlov's dog. I said, And why are you asking me why am I wearing that wig? Oh, because I like it. I think it's cool. Oh, okay. I'm defensive. Because she's been known to not be very nice. You're misconstruing Pavlov's dog deeply. You're, you're thinking about learned experience. You're thinking about repetitive learned experience. You can see, oh, every time I walk in here, this guy gets mad at me and yells. Maybe I shouldn't do that. You can tell when you're not allowed in certain areas in foreign countries because people screaming in a different language tend to yell and point back at the door you just came in. Now is it Pavlov's dog if I know that, that I'm supposed to leave in spite of the fact that I don't know the language? No, it's cultural indicators and we're human beings. My point is, viewers. Most of this mean stuff that you see out there is because somebody's not happy. Happy, well-adjusted people don't do this stuff. Happy, well-adjusted people rarely accomplish anything grandiose in society. What's your point? Happy, well-adjusted people just kind of keep the wheels spinning. The guy starts losing weight. He says, I couldn't believe how kind people were. Number one, we need to get it in our head. We're not always going to have sex appeal with everybody, so give it up. But Oh, so now you've deduced that, huh? You can still be nice to somebody. Unfortunately, too many people are afraid to be kind to the overweight because I've had guys tell me, you know, I tried to be nice to her and she thought I was interested in her. I've been down that road. I say, you know what? Then again, Pacific is a loner. I don't hang out with people. I hang out with a Filipino friend. It's because you're twitchy and you're weird and you ejaculate random thoughts. I mean, that, that tends to put people off, man.
but that's about it. I don't, I don't do things with people. Pavlov's dog. I don't want to get hurt. Again, you just you're now you're just obsessed with saying Pavlov's dog anytime you're thinking about any sort of learned behaviors. And because of that, I shield myself. Okay, stop eating on camera, and yeah, we get your wounded dog. We've seen your videos, man. Go to the thrift store, and people watching. I watch the women that come in with sleeveless shirts, tattoos. I watch the women that look like yupsters that are shopping in there, and I see the same thing. None of them are going to smile at me. None of them are going to say hi. But a Hispanic woman who looks to be in her mid-thirties, pushing a car to look at me and go, or a black woman, I'll say, wow, I like your necklace. And she'll go, thank you, thank you so much. Shocked. We were Skyping last night. Oh, I think you're talking about your bow now. But you, you got to understand, if, if someone just, I'm walking down the street and they go, Oh, wow, man, that's a cool shirt. I'm going to stop, and I'm going to be kind of shocked and go, Wow, thanks, man, and I'm going to walk on. You see, because it's, it's just a normal reaction, man. If you just randomly compliment people, that's usually the reaction you're going to get. I mean, as long as you're normal about it, and you don't then proceed to hammer about a couple more compliments, questions, or anything like that, because then you're just being creepy. I think you fuzz those lines, though. And she says... I said, wouldn't it be nice if we could just be blunt? You know, the women that show up in church, showing their cleavage. And exact word, she says, don't you just want to go up and say, nice church tits. <laughs> now, my viewers will go, she said that, yeah. And I laughed, and she laughed. She goes, you know, if they went out and told the pastor, I'd say, yeah, I said that. You know, why, why is she dressed like that in here? Again, your, your puritanism is just outlandish, sir. Do you not like tits? I like tits. I don't know why you'd want them to put them away. I mean, if we could live in a society where all the women wander around with their tits out, I don't, I don't really see the problem there. I mean, you'd see some unfortunate cases, but we see some unfortunate cases now. We know they're unfortunate before we see them. She doesn't share all my conservative views or my political views, and she told me it is not appropriate to wear skirts, skin-tight skirts, too much arm showing, cleavage showing, open-toed sandals in church. She goes, I just don't believe that's right. Well, see, that's a personal belief. You can't dictate that upon other people or insult them for having the choice to wear it. I see, this is, again, this is the problem. I think feminists take it too far, and then I've got to turn around and smack you in the fucking face. She doesn't share my evangelicalism at all. But she's dead on. And I said to her, I said, but pastors don't deal with this. And she goes, why not? Are they afraid human resources are going to come down? She goes, well, they're afraid of that, but more specifically, they're afraid of ostracizing their congregations. Do you not know how this works? These people need people to throw money at them to survive. I mean, they're like professional high-end god beggars. They literally need people to throw money at them. You must know that. Aren't, aren't, aren't the pastors supposed to be preaching the truth? And they said, have you heard? Yeah, but they bring cameras in and film guys saying stuff like stone the gays and churches get real unpopular real fast. Heard my video? She goes, yes. Don't get me wrong, viewers. I see a bra with a shirt go by and I see skin showing. I go, dang, natural. And what frustrates me is I ought to say something in public. Wow, that's some pretty nice cleavage, nice midriff. And I guarantee you, with white women, they would be horrified. And I'd say, hey, I'm not stalking you, but you are walking around like that. What did you expect? I'm not supposed to say anything? Dude, if you walk up to any woman of any race in America and say, nice tits, doll, I'd be shocked if she didn't smack the shit out of you, man. That's just, what the fuck is wrong with you? If I walked through the mall with my pants down, I promise you, you're going to say something. You'd be calling security, right? Yeah, but if you wanted to wear, like, um, uncomfortably high short shorts, no one would stop you. No one would be allowed to stop you. 
because you're allowed to show all that skin because technically it's not illegal. You could walk in there in short shorts and a cut off midriff top and wander around and just and just be all sexy. Just be your all sexy self. I mean, you already do this ridiculous thing where you cut the sh sleeves off of sweatshirts and wear that like it's normal, like some rejected rocky loser. But besides that, you could do that and no one would stop you. Both sexes have that. See, society has defined what is normal. Society has said that it's okay to for women to dress this way, but if a man walked down with his literally his butt hanging all the way out, shirt riding up high, what if I walked in with a woman's shirt on, riding up to here, sleeveless? You've never been to Miami or Vegas or or anywhere in you know L.A. or Seattle or I mean, you've you've never seen that. I've seen plenty of that. How about the keys? There's lots of that in the keys, man. That I wore skin tight scrotum framing pants. I wonder, do you think women would not say anything? No, dude, I can pretty much guarantee most women would not say a goddamn thing. Just like most men don't say a goddamn thing. And most men don't even want to say a goddamn thing. The fact that you want to walk up and be like, sweet tits, doll, that's weird, man. They wouldn't to me. But they went to each other. Pacific is not obnoxious, but there are times when I think we need to fight back. Okay, Pacific, you are indeed obnoxious. That's why I do this. I think we should confront those women, not harass them, say, Wow, nice breasts, lady. Don't get mad at me. You're showing them. You obviously want attention. Maybe if they heard that more and more, it might bother them. You're right. Maybe if we wandered around and sexually harassed women for no reason other than you can't seem to control your dick, society would just be a better place. Start wearing a shirt. The problem is, is women like subtleties. Women are comfortable with subtleties. They like it when your eye goes like this because it's a power trip. But if you were to turn around and say, nice boobs, youch. Hey Pacific, can you pop your chest? Just wondering. It's a bit of a power trip, bro. I'm just saying. If you can pop your chest in a tight t-shirt, women tend to either look at you and then immediately away out of nervousness, or just dead at you for an unacknowledgeable amount of time. You see, men can do that too. They just have to work at it. I imagine some of these women have to work their asses off too. I would say to the men, don't be unclassy about it. Don't be undignified. Say, wow. You just said to walk up and say nice boobs. That's pretty undignified, homie. Oh, ma'am. That's some great looking cleavage. Nice. And if they get all bent out of shape, the men should say, Oh, I'm sorry. You're advertising it. You're showing it. You know, this is America. I have freedom of speech. You have freedom of expression. I have freedom of speech. Let me tell you something about white women. When they don't like something, they will muster their forces together and shut it down. <laughs> that's funny considering what happened like the Bernie Sanders rally and all kinds of other places that's predominantly led by women of color you see that doesn't that doesn't really add up you see when people want something done they'll band together and shut it down when feminists want something done they'll band together and shut it down but nowadays most feminists aren't even white sir uh, you obviously haven't been paying attention more so than men fact watch Hey man, fuck you. Men got killed for shutting things down. Men used to sit in factories so that we could have eight hour work week or eight hour work days. And they got the shit kicked out of them. They got shot at. That's what happens when a registered sex offender tries to move into a neighborhood of a bunch of stay at home moms. Shit. <laughs> I have a feeling you have direct experience with this. That sounded way too personal, man. Wow. They will gang up and raise hell. Dude, I think he's a sex offender. And they should. They do the same thing at work. When women don't like men, either for real or imagined stuff, accusations, watch out. They Listen, I have a friend that works in kitchens. He's, well... He's kind of an unlikable fellow. I hang out with him because 
I like him. I like the fact that he's quirky and weird. I like quirky and weird people, which is actually kind of how I found your channel. Someone said, hey, check this quirky guy out. And I'm like, nope, too fucked up for me. Now, I'm telling you, that's saying something. Now, my quirky and weird friend, he has trouble in kitchens. Kitchens that are predominantly, by predominantly, I mean 100%, men. Now, these men will turn against him and gang up and kick him out. Because people expel things from their societies that they don't like. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's human nature. We'll find a way to down them. They will. They will. They will. I worked at a school in Minnesota as a traffic attendant, playground attendant, teacher's aide, lunchroom assistant, all that. That's terrifying. Why have you always worked around children? Six hours a day. Six fifty an hour. This was in 2007. My boss, principal, told me that I'm so glad to see a man in here. You know, this is this is liberal Minnesota, right? This is all women. And I saw the catty bullcrap of even Minnesota women. The two of <laughs> even Minnesota women. What are, you, what are you trying to imply? Listen, man, there's not a place where people aren't people. Other playground attendants were women. They'd stand on the playground, and the one looked like hell warmed over. She was slender. She looked really cute in the summer, her summer outfits and her revealing shirts. But in the winter, she just oh, looked like melted candle wax. She was so nice to me, and she got me the job. And yet you just talk terrible shit about her in public. True story. I was on the playground, and a kid dropped his Teenage Ninja Mutant Turtle toy. It was a storm drain in the center of the playground. It was a storm drain cover with a metal grate, very heavy. And about two feet underneath that was a well that, with a pipe that went that away. The kid can't fit in the pipe, nothing. And without thinking, the kid's crying. I said, I'll get it. Everybody stand back. And I reached down and pulled the grate off. Grabbed it out of there, put the grate back on. That woman, screamed, she, she, she screamed at me and then went in the building to tell boss. I'm like, what did I just do? This is probably broke the law. I'm, I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to do that. What she said. Now, before that, these two women stand around on playground duty, just yelling, barking out orders. Oh, you mean watching large groups of children on various areas? I'm out there, and I go, come on, man, let's do the train. I get all those kids behind me, and I'm <laughs> around the playground, throwing rubber balls around, chasing them, playing tag, jumping on the monkey bars. Okay, so you're observing maybe five, seven kids at any given time, and not too closely at that. They're, they're all either behind you or in various states in a 360-degree a circumference around you and you're not paying attention and, and you're disparaging the women that used to quote unquote stand around or position themselves in peak positions to see large groups of children and monitor the entire playground at one. Oh wait, you don't understand any of this, do you? You're a complete nincompoop. I was the playground. No, you were the village idiot. The teachers will look out the back classroom windows and go, look at Pacific playing with these kids, that's awesome. Teachers would come up and say, that is so neat to see you involved. I had several teachers, including females, say, we noticed those other two women just stand around and look <laughs> miserable. Those kind of women will look for an opportunity to Josephize you. Jo <laughs> Josephize you is... Joseph, come lie with me. Oh, good God. No, I cannot. Your master's entrusted me. I'm not taking his wife. Day after day, she does this. And he has a loose-fitting tunic on. And she grabs him and says, lie with me. No. She grabs him. He flees. Tunic comes off. She goes to her master and says, this Hebrew is making us look disgusting. Whoa, man. Jesus, the Bible really fucked you up, dude. Do you think Potiphar believed his wife? I would be inclined to think that he probably didn't. But he knew what she was all about, thought, you know, I got battles to fight, I got empires to rule.
I'm not going to deal with this. Joseph, you're going to jail. I'm not going to put up with a woman on menstruation. Sorry. We don't. Jesus Christ. You're seriously like the worst. No. Women can cause some real trouble. Yeah, men can cause some real trouble too. Again, the Bible really fucked you up, man. Women are not the root of all evil. So she went in and told the principal I pulled up the storm braid. And her premise for that was, you know, now these other kids know how to open it. <sighs> okay, these are grade school kids and not one of them could lift that thing at all. Two of them couldn't lift that thing. It was very, very heavy, solid iron. I went to the principal and I said, you know, I'm sorry, I didn't even think about it. Unusual for you not to think something through. He says, you didn't do anything wrong. He says, it probably wasn't a good idea because monkey see, monkey do. The kids will see you do that and go, oh, let me see if I can lift it. And they're going to... And they are going to try, trust me. It's going to be a thing for a very long time until kids start to do it. Then someone's going to have to come in there and like weld it down or something. Trust me. Dan, they're trying to pull it. I said, that I can handle, boss. I'm sorry. He chuckled. And he says, I know what's going on here. He says, we had a man work for us, and those same women drove him out. He did the same thing you did. He played with the kids. The kid respected him. He said, all the teachers have come up to me and said, have you seen Pacific out there? He plays with the kids. He engages with the kid. He's positive, and those other two women stand around bitching. So even in liberal Minnesota, the other women in there saw the difference between the light and the darkness. <laughs> You've cast yourself as the light, huh? They are the darkness. Wow, man. And I did my job well. The teachers didn't ask them. They asked me to do reams of photocopying. They had their tests every year. and So you got used again, and you're considering that a good thing. You're literally a child inside. You got chose as teacher's helper and didn't realize that she was using you to not have to do her own work. For the record, teachers usually cho choose male students for just this reason, because they feel better helping. Especially because it's a, it's a woman, usually. I go down to the library and photocopy hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages of stuff. Just like a good boy. The librarian was cleaning out a section of the library. I found a bunch of cat in a hat, Dr. Seuss hats. I took one and and walk down the hall. Every classroom door was open, class is facing me, teacher's back to the door, and all I would do is go and stick that head and hat. And the kids would, ah, oh, look, there's Pacific, ah, and I'd go, dart off. Again, it's stories like this that lead me to believe he actually goes by Pacific potentially in real life. I'm not sure, I'm not going to hold him to that, but it, it's scary and he might. Off. I'd do that every classroom door. And go back in the library and finish what I was doing. Well, good. I'm glad you brought someone some joy. And when teachers come out, the bell rings for the breaks. So you're the one that disrupted my class, Pacific. And I forgot to take the hat off. I said, me? And they'd laugh and go, nice hat. The principal, who was very serious, came around the corner, saw me walking out, and very seriously says, Nice hat, Pacific. <laughs> it's like, uh-oh. Shouldn't be clowning around. He didn't get mad, but he, he managed a very wry grin. He told me out of his own mouth, he says, this is what women do. You're doing good. You're doing a good job. It makes them look bad, so they're going to try to tear you down, Pacific. Forget about the storm grape. Just don't do it again. He says, I understand your intentions. Next time it happens, come in and tell me. We'll get the janitor after the kids go back in from recess and we'll get it out of there. I said, fair enough. Yeah, you see, you see, you, you know, what I will say here is that in spite of the fact that it may even be possible that at this school that, that, that the women were particularly defensive of their positions or whatever, I don't really care about that. I'm beyond that at this point. She realized immediately, immediately what the problem with opening a storm drain in front of children was. And you had to be told. Working with men is always better than working with females in a job site. And I've had women tell me that. Well, then how did they get on that job site? How were they? 
I mean, were, were they not like men on that job site? This woman who in the summer was so sweet and nice to me told me they need another aide. You want the job? Yeah. But then I go there and do my job, and I always greeted her. <sighs> I started looking at her thinking, man, I used to think she was hottie once. You see her out there in winter with her hands in her overcoat, standing with this older woman, and they're just, you know, back and forth. I saw him. I was doing my job every day, working up a sweat, running out of breath, chasing kids. Say, hey, don't be climbing up on that thing over there. You know, I did my job, but I kind of played. They didn't do anything. Just yelled. Yeah, you just said, hey, get those kids down off there. That's that's what they were doing. But when you stay in one position, like in corners and places like that, you can actually keep an eye on a lot of kids at once. And, and when you're playing, you can really only pay attention to a small number. I mean, come on, man. I told you, get off of there! White women think they have so much authority when they're shouting and screaming. I love it when I have a bus. I pulled up. I'm positive. Sunny day. We're going to a pumpkin farm, and the kids are all excited about that. And these kids are getting on. Yeah, you know, being kids. And here comes the dour, white, pretty woman. Yelling, screaming, child-directed speech. Won't even say good morning, driver is more concerned about controlling 30 plus odd kids. I say, are you the teacher? Yes, I am. Well, excuse me. Are you the resident? Well, it was a dumb question. Biatch. Why do they work with kids? Why do they act like that? Miserable people are like a sinking ocean liner. Ironic you should say that. If you're anywhere near that ship when it goes down for the final stern section, you better get away. Well, keep that in mind, everybody who follows this fuckwit. Because the whirlpool, the suction, will pull you with it. Why do you so when he finally gets caught for either molesting people or killing women, just remember, he might suck you down with him. I think so many women feed in the workplace, are bitching about their boss or supervisor, their coworkers, and they take their lunch hour instead of going, oh, wow, you fixed a nice lunch. Yeah, you know, and no, it's bitching, 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 bitching. Women are... Almost all of my male coworkers spend their lunch periods bitching about their job. I'm good at bending my ear. A woman at work. We had gone out a couple times, not on dates, but just to lunch. And it dawned on me one day I've just become a complaint dumpster. Literally, every day. Complaining about the job, complaining about the driver, complaining about her pains, complaining I'm not a morning person, complaining that she wants something better, complaining, complaining, complaining. I said, get on Indeed.com and see. You know, you were staying home mom for years, you're coming into the workplace, you're not going to land the, you know, fifty, sixty thousand dollars job a year, you're just not. You've determined you're not a morning person, the bus aid thing is not for you. This is year three. Hustle it up, homie. I take her to breakfast. She never offered to pay for her half or me, ever. Finally said, done. I don't call her. I don't respond anymore. I'll but somehow you still manage to just get taken advantage of time and time again. You just don't learn. Say hi in the workplace, and I go out the door like, meep, meep, roadrunner. It's like, I'm not going to be the trash dumpster for your complaints today. Well, thank God to whoever it is you interact with that you have a YouTube channel you spend hours on dumping your shit in. I don't care if it's an internet troll. I don't care if it's a co-worker. When women feel the braveness to come up and criticize another person's looks that really is just a co-worker, you gotta stop and wonder. Is that coming out of a place of well-adjusted happiness? Of course not. 
When one woman looks at another woman and says, in this tone, Oh, honey, you know, if, if you just went in and you got a facelift and dyed that hair, you could just get, look so much better. Is that really malicious? It's not. It's not intended to be. It's, it's like makeup advice. It, it, it can be felt as being insulting, but the person who's delivering it really rarely means to be insulting. And this can, this can, this can be construed from tone. Most of the time, when a woman is being cutting, it's fairly obvious. And other times, when a woman is actually just trying to be like, Oh, well, you know, if you did your eyebrows like this, it would be... They're not saying your eyebrows are currently hideous. It takes an overly sensitive person to think that. The mean-spirited F.U. comments that you see on the Internet, is that coming from a place of well-adjusted wellness? Of course not. Well, that's why I try and leave concise commentary that actually has a point instead of just saying stupid things. <sighs> When an obese man of 700 pounds, count them, starts losing weight, then sees that another individual cares enough to help him, he stops his trolling. I was reading various studies just this week that people had forwarded to me on trolling online and scientific research and studies have been done. It's very interesting. <coughs> I would pay to see a study on that. <coughs> said these people are extremely dark <coughs> oh now if by extremely dark you mean hyper realist then I guess I fall into that category and as a sidebar a lot of them are very addicted to video games always comes back to that doesn't it Again, I've been too busy doing stuff like this to even try and play a video game. I actually would like to take time out of my day to play a video game at some point shortly, but I've been doing this and my job, and, well, that's taken most of my time. People got mad at me when I made the link in a video about <clears throat> online gaming and the troll mentality and the Oregon shooting, and I said... People in America seem to never want to accept the fact that you are what you eat. If you're hanging around in a dark group of people that is just dark and spewing their venom at everybody, what's to stop them from going to the next level and making the front page for taking out people? What you're saying is the equivalent of saying, why don't more stand-up comedians kill people? Well, because we get it out. We, we get it out in the open. We, we air our grievances with the world. You see, it's actually more people that don't properly air their grievances with the world that I would guess do things like that. They're very small social circles, very negative feedback. You see, the thing is, is in a lot of the dark quote-unquote areas of the internet, these people give each other very positive feedback. They very rarely say, hey, you're stupid, unless there's an actual stupid thing to say. Um, but, but most people in that environment know that if someone says something stupid, they're trying to be stupid. They're being silly. You see, they're, they're, these are things that you don't seem to have. This is the nuance you don't seem to have about these issues. And as for video games and shootings, I'm not getting into that. It's been debunked so many fucking times. More often than not, you start studying these people. They go out and do these things. They're involved in some dark behavior online as well as offline. So, for Pacific to make a generalization, somebody comes back with a stupid video and attacks, I just go, must have stepped on some toes, and then you listen to his video, and it's, Pacific's a retard, and Pacific's full of SHIT, and it's like, yep, then you're a class act, scholar, gamer, loser, thug, troll, push the chrome handle. Every single insult you have in that tiny little head of yours, whereas I actually haven't been vulgar. In almost any of my preceding videos, because you see, I can actually outclass you, sir. I have that ability. I actually am a scholar. But you don't say anything scholarly. You you quote random Bible verses that really support some of the most hateful portions of the Bible, and and then you insult women, specifically white women, and you bitch about people at your job. Now that's worthy of making fun of. I hate to tell you that. And yet I have viewers on here that don't necessarily agree with me. Oh, we'll get to some of your viewers. I have a, I have a beautiful little thing for that. Just shout out to my girlfriend. I did a shout out to Leatherbound. Two women that 
don't like all this feminization, that don't like this all this immodest dressing. Two women that have more conservative views about their personal attire out in public than most Christian women in America in the white evangelical sector. Hello? Well, you know, I, I know some women like that too, but some of them do it because their culture has imposed that upon them in a manner that, that's stuck. Uh, sometimes women just recognize that, that it's better if their bodies are covered up. Uh, and some women actually find it empowering to not reveal a whole lot so that when they undress they can do so in stages. It's all about personal preference, you see. That's, that's the problem with both sides of this argument. Sadly, the kind of women that need to hear what I have to say, they don't show up here. Oh, dude, if the kind of women that you wanted to see this saw this, you'd never have a fucking YouTube page, dude. I almost did it. I almost started linking you randomly to people on Twitter that were rad femmes, but I decided it would be cruel. One woman told me, because of you, I've learned to become a better driver. Another woman told me, because of you, I've learned to love my husband better and not pick at him. Well, that's good. I guess you stopped one person from killing someone driving and one person from nagging her husband to death. How many people are writing these trolls saying, your channels really helped me deal with the stresses in my life? Quite a few, and I've made quite a few friends. What's your point? None. When I look at the people who've actually taken the time to attack, their views and subscriptions are in the frickin' toilet. Need I say any more? Well, you've been on here for years, man. I've only been on here a couple of months. Give me some time, Jesus. You don't have a forum. You have a forum with a bunch of malcontents. Woohoo! Raise your little flag, buddy. Seeing the picture of this man, who was trolling, kind of puts it in perspective. This is the keyboard warrior? To remember. Geez, seeing that guy that, that was involved in that drive-by shooting really put it into perspective. It, I mean, wow. And there could be skinny, scrawny guys and girls that do this. Or it could be bored in shape dudes, who knows. Misery loves company. That's the bottom line. I see this at work. I see this with people. <clears throat> that I'm the kind of guy that most of the time I walk into work, you know, try to be upbeat. I had a woman come up to me one day and said, You're too loud. Be quiet. You are wildly loud, to be fair. Excuse me? I said, Do you hear all the noise in this break room? I'm not being as loud as that. This is a woman I've always been nice to. She sits with what's known as the Krabby Table. The faces that look like melted candle wax. You know. You know what I'm talking about. Well, yours kind of looks like that, so... The people who've been there. The people who are unhappy. One's you look unhappy. Usually overweight. And the two that are skinny sit there and talk to each other like this. Yeah, that guy's an idiot. That's all they do all day long. They don't enjoy their job. How you doing today? I'm here. Rather not be here. Then why don't you just call in sick? Because when you bring your essence in here, there's just negative energy waves radiating from you, and I don't like it. People ask me, do you like your job? I do. Other aspects. You know, I've I've only met a few people that like jobs like yours. I, I've known a couple of grocery boys that liked their job a lot, and a couple of bag boys that really enjoyed their job. They had IQs of about 75, though. Most people working menial and mundane jobs know that they're fucked. They know that, that something in their life went wrong. I mean, they know that, man. You, however, think, hey, I'm a bus driver, fuck yeah. Hmm... Stuff that I don't like? Of course. It's with any job. But overall, I like what I do. And there's people that I enjoy seeing when I come into work this morning. Hey, hey, you know. And there's other people. As I was telling somebody the other day. Some people.
Sometimes I wish I previewed these all the way through instead of just halfway through, so I'd know whether he was going to start droning on about his personal issues to a level that would make your normal viewer suicidal. People are the Exxon Valdez, and if you're out there swimming in the harbor or the, the beach, and you see the Exxon Valdez steam and to your area, get out of the water. It is very interesting that since he dropped the boat metaphor and since I started using a sinking ship metaphor that he's become obsessed with sinking ship metaphors. I think I've actually damaged this guy. I think he is following me and I think he'll probably be watching this. Hi Pacific. Get out. He's going to be a tar baby. Whoa man, don't say tar baby. That's funny. I get the hint. Women want to be rude. They want to attack you and criticize you. It's like, why do they single me out? Everybody over here is yelling and talking loud and making jokes over there. And I'm talking. Because your voice is harsh as fuck, man. Talking to somebody here, and I'm being a little loud so she can hear me because of all this noise. Who a woman fires her gun at me. I learn. Don't go over by that table. Don't talk to those people. And I don't deliberately be rude, but I'm running here, there, and everywhere. They keep them busy now. Oh, how come you never say hi to me? <laughs> um, nothing personal. I'm constantly busy going here, there. I really don't think about it. Woman won't pay attention to Pacific. Pacific gets butt hurt. Woman wonders why Pacific isn't paying attention to her and would like his attention. Pacific gets butt hurt. And I think the next time they ask that, I'll say, you know what? Sometimes there's just so much negativity radiating from you that it's just best for me to shut my mouth. You know, sometimes people do that as a way of trying to gain someone's attention. Because I can't get in trouble for that. And I, I think I should say that. You know what? I try to be nice, criticize my loud voice. You guys are kind of grumpy over there. And you know what? I don't want to talk to you. That's why. Call that the commiserating misery committee. You guys are so clever over there. It's not cool. I agree, your petty high school squabbles aren't cool at all. So, this isn't about trolls as it is about just people. Whether it's in Chavern, it's your personal workplace, your church, you got them in church. You got them everywhere. You got them in the government. You got them. Jesus trolls. In all levels of life. Malcontents. Unhappy people. They're sinking ships. Again, obsessed with a sinking ship metaphor after I bring it up. Hmm. And believe me, if you get too close to them, you'll be a part of their wreckage. Again, take note, 3,200 people near him. Don't get too near them. The propellers are spinning and they'll cut you up. Swim out of the area. I have to tell myself that all the time. Poison people. I see it on buses. Most of the kids will be nice, and there's that one girl that gets on with that mean, what I call the look of darkness. Won't smile, won't nothing. And I'm guilty. Wow, that's why she's so rude. You know, for someone with such a sour fucking face, it's hard for me to take that seriously from you. I have to tell myself, <coughs> don't focus on that. Focus on the fact that there's a whole bunch of teenagers that respect you enough to say, hey man. Yesterday, one of the students that's on the high school route is a counselor. Oh, well, 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 Robble, robble. He gets on the bus. Uh huh. He says, Oh my gosh, how are you? I said, Hey, I didn't know you were in this. He rides my morning bus. And, uh, now I have that kind of rapport. And I know that there's drivers that don't engage with the kids, they don't interact. They just treat them like a bunch of freight boxes. Yeah. I rode the bus to school all through high school. All of my bus drivers were awesome. Um, if you had been my bus driver, I would have been afraid. Well, Adam. And the way I underscore my life 
So I'll see a bunch of drivers on a field trip, 10 of us buses lined up, they're yelling and screaming at their kids, and I'm standing outside my door. Morning, everybody. You guys ready to go on a trip? Morning, teacher. You the teacher? Introduce myself, and I create a positive environment right away. And I look at the other ones being drill sergeant, I'm going, they're going to have a fun trip today. Not. I've noticed I have less problems by how I set the tone. I'm sure there's no confirmation bias going on here, and I'm sure you're not being overly judgmental on other people at all. If you're not known for that, that's not your, it's not your M.O. I know these things. You know them because you are omniscient. It's just easy for me to menstruate on the internet and let my guard down a little bit because I don't... Menstruate? Did you just say you're menstruating on the internet? My stomach hurts. Did you just say that? Holy fuck. I have to put on an act here. And it's kind of nice. Most of my fans can see through that and go... Wow, Civic's got PMS today, but he does have some good things to say. I, I've very rarely heard anything even remotely agreeable come from you, man. Yes, even men can have PMS. Did you know that? No, they can't. They can have high testosterone rates. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Two things that I don't like. Colds and canker sores. I bet you get a lot of canker sores. I don't have any of those right now, but I think they're both of the devil. It's just my personal opinion. Everything's the devil to you, man. I was very stressed about something last night. No, not online stuff. I had made a decision to do something. Nothing evil, nothing wrong. And it was causing so much anxiety. Because I was tripping over this and that, and this and that. Oh, I can't wait. I'm sure this is going to be great. I legit hadn't watched this far. And I felt like... Get rid of it. Get rid of it. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing. And I noticed that we as Americans sometimes... Wait, you're, you're not going to tell us what you were anxious about? Really? Get involved in things that cause so much anxiety. And you know what? Get rid of it. Yeah, that's good. Anything that's hard or causes you anxiety, just get rid of it. Don't deal with it. Don't confront it. Don't actually solve the problem. Just get rid of it. Good old Bible learning. Get rid of it. And it's funny. I felt free. Okay, God. I'll do that. Sometimes we hold on to... This is literal freedom in slavery. This is literal. I took a words, where I took words I found in the Bible and said, "Oh, well, that kind of fits my situation." I mean, Nostradamus was right sometimes, um, and yeah, I'm just going to make the decision that way. Thanks, God. It's good I don't have to thinky anymore because it hurt me brain. Things, relationships, ideals. No, I'm not talking about my relationship with this gal. Not at all. So far, that's intact. <laughs> I give it, I give it six months max. Oh. And that reminds me. Sometimes I hear things that people say, and it triggers something like, oh, you know, I want to dress X. I've heard other people say this or that. And people get really offended. Man, I said something to him, and he repeated it on the internet. I didn't give away. Oh, you mean, you mean you plagiarize some people? That's that's good. Their identity. And I said, that's part of what makes a forum is my interaction with other people. It doesn't mean I hate or disrespect. It means I disagree with a specific topic. And that's another problem we have sometimes in our societies. When I say something, if somebody doesn't hold to that belief that I hold, they think I'm attacking them. I'm not. Well. If I were gay or a white woman, I might feel a little attacked. Believe me, when I'm attacking somebody, they'll know it. I'm going to look them right in the eye and say, you know what? I attack ideologies that I consider to be not accurate. Well, so do I. That's why I'm here. But beyond that, your attacks were like, like watching a kitten struggle against a ball of yarn. It was cute. <laughs> not the person. The only time I will attack a person is when I see an ugliness emanating from that person, regardless of their viewpoint, whether they're Christian and agree with me on every ounce of theology. 
No. He always tries so hard to come off as brave. I mean, like, he's taking a strong stand here. Jesus, man, you're so fucking full of yourself. The Civic has adored certain people that they said something to me. It's like, I need to address that in a video. Just this week, somebody was offended. It's something I said. I can't imagine why. Not a problem. That's a capital on Civic Ocean. I can't stand how he walks away and keeps talking. Doesn't seem to realize his mic is shit. But I wanted to reiterate to my viewers, it doesn't mean I hate you. I speak hard. I speak tough. Yeah, it's tough love because I'm your daddy, right? You fucking weirdo. But if you watch the way I deal with people every day in my everyday life, you'd understand that this is my form to be who I am. This is my form to say, I say here what I can't otherwise say in the presence of others. Because we're just... Oh, oh, we all get that, trust me. Anyone watching this and anything else I've made about you knows that this is where you go to ejaculate the worst things about yourself on the internet. I was too much division, strife, or ill feelings because somebody would take it wrong and think, oh, he's a hater, he's a hater. I'm not. There's some people I disagree with, but I hold them in extreme high esteem. Specifically, one of the individuals I'm referring to now. I have no reason to disrespect that individual. I wouldn't want to. I like that. Well, that's good. That person. No. It's not my girlfriend. But I have viewers on here all the time that write me and tell me. This is my forum. You give me feedback. Sometimes that feedback is talked about on here. Sometimes it causes me to go, is that true what she just said? Does Pacific agree with that statement? That's all it is. When he goes all fucking Muppet, it's great. You're the fuel for the channel. Just hands all over. Just be yourself. Doesn't mean I hate. Doesn't mean I'm attacking you. Means I'm taking issue with a belief that not just you hold, but many have held. And I said, is this true when this person says this? Pacific doesn't believe so, and here's why. Yes. That's what it is. Okay, folks, it's time for me to go to work. This is Pacific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even gonna let you sign off. Fuck that. But it's good that you ended on your. Uh, good that you ended on your fans, cause um, I brought the. Oh wow, what's that? Hey, I don't know where else to go with this, but I'm scared. And no, I'm not just trolling. But it is normal to have thoughts of killing women. Each day, my hate for them grows stronger and stronger to the point where I want to torture them and make them beg for mercy. I'm becoming scared of myself for that reason. Will I actually do it one day? I just have so much hate for women. I don't know how much longer I can control it. I'm scared of myself. Pacific says... I would get a good counselor or pastor and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk about that issue. Personally, I'd alert the fucking authorities, but that's just me. And, and really, now here's another one of your fans. This is lovely. Uh, figure out why that is and deal with it. They owe you nothing uh, unless you feel animosity towards anyone for a negative reason. Possibly they've pissed you off in the past or whatever it may cause may be. You don't have the God-given right to take a life. Let life deal with it. I mean, really, it, this is, you're, you're just... It, Hate, hate filled people. You talk about how trolls are hate filled people. You talk about how other people are hate filled people. And your own fans are ridiculous. And, and when it comes to people having weird obsessions of cars and stuff, what's up with this man? Well, hey everybody, guess who? It is me, Pacific. And we got this baby. You complain that other people are gas-guzzling losers, and, and I mean, you, you, you rebuilt this old hunk of junk. Do you have any idea how garbage these old motors were on fuel? I mean, even the best of them got like 10 miles to the gallon. Uh, um, and, well, I think I'm just going to have to end it there. Uh, Pacific, I hope you do watch these, because um, I, I like watching you get irritated. So, um, for the fans of this, this has been Stinking of the Pacific Ocean Liner. Hope you guys had fun.